Jettas to the Bengals. We'll talk about this coming up next on the Winston Eddie Podcast. It's an exciting time to be a Bengals fan. I'm AC Zell. We got a special show as always. The voice of the Bengals. Oh, and four. Willie Anderson. Corey Dillon. The name of this thing is called Winston Eddie. Oh, and I'm not going to stop Talk to us about that role coaching scene. I'm still going to give you the same AJ. I'm going to work as hard as I can to be the best. I've been working here since I met y'all, boy. Yeah. I got to get you a top five receiver. <laughs> That's another thing. Watch out for us. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Winsonetti Podcast. I am Ace. He is Zim. Zimmy, what's happening? Man, interesting day on Twitter right now. Like, interesting day, you know, all over the internet. It's so much stuff going on, like, in the world. I just want to tell everybody, I appreciate y'all rocking with us. Appreciate you rolling and um, coming to another episode of the Winsonetti Pod. Um, I know that a lot of people like have been asking me about like what's up when you're in Ace and Spaces and stuff. It's the off season, so we have like different times that we, you know, we kind of go in, we chill out, different things like that. So don't worry, we'll be back on there. We we got other different platforms like playback.tv. Make sure y'all go there. Also on there is the Ringless Bandits, is the name of the room, but playback.tv go on there. It's really, really dope. It's just like spaces as well. But we we've been rocking and rolling, bro. How you doing? Yeah, bro. Like you said, rocking and rolling, closing in on um, a big milestone for the channel. So please be sure to hit that subscribe button. We appreciate that. We're getting to a couple of milestones. Uh, but like you said, man, enjoying the off season. Uh, I got projects that I'm working on with Prime. If you don't know what Prime is, it's basically a calculation that pretty much gives you the likelihood that the Bengals will draft the prospect. So working on that for this class was looking at some of the safeties today, even though I don't think the Bengals are going to take a safety since we got Geno Stone, but uh, finishing those things up and just waiting for the draft, man. And, and speaking of the draft, the Bengals has some top 30 visits. We're going to get into that next. All right, Zimmy, the Bengals had some top 30 visits come in, some very notable ones, especially when it comes to guys that were in the trenches. Uh, Talise Fuaga, as we were recording this, was just announced uh, that he has a top 30 visit. Amarius Mims, the offensive tackle out of Georgia, came in for a visit. Nose tackle McKinley Jackson stopped through the season. I didn't know that. Troy Fatanu out of Washington, offensive tackle. He stopped through as well. Uh, the Bengals are doing their due diligence. Tavondre Sweat, like everybody who yeah. you thought of in the trenches has been in Cincinnati or will be in Cincinnati in the next 24 hours or in the following 48 hours. They've all been into the city. To me, this kind of says trenches are extremely important. Um, these are guys that they're interested in. These are guys that are on the Bengals' radar. And I don't feel like there's ever been a time, bro, where we've just seen them bring in, like, everybody together. Like, everybody. Amarius Mims and, like, Tavondre Sweat on the same day. Like, I don't even know how the plane was able to land in Cincinnati uh, with those boys on it. But clearly, they are looking to beef up Paws in the trenches. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and I think, you know, <laughs> the best part about the, the whole situation is like there's a little bit of gamesmanship to it where you're like, OK, let me throw them off a little bit. But at the end of the day, the Bengals are like, look, we're just taking we're looking at the best, you know, players in a lot of those players just happen to be trenches players. But, you know. I just think it, it's they're making no secret about it. Look. We're going to get our board straight. We're going to give 10 of the best guys, whether it's five offensive linemen, five defensive linemen, whatever, up front, and one of them going to be there. And we don't care how who knows about it. You can try to trade in front of it. You can do whatever you want. Our board going to be set because we already know and we are identifying. And most of our fans have identified, like, this is our biggest weakness is in the trenches. Outside of that, there are different things that we're going to talk about, you know, but at the same time, you know, I don't I don't think that those are our weaknesses. So I don't think it I did not know Amarius Mims had been there. I didn't know that. That was my first yeah, time hearing. Mims, it. big Mims. Mims was there. Okay. Same day as like Tavondre Sweat. 
Um, this was like a lot of it was actually posted on Twitter. I wish I had the gentleman's name, but he was kind of looking at the stories on Instagram and a lot of them were making it known that they were in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, a lot yeah, of locations yeah, and, and stuff like that. Um, in there, we got another super chat here from Diddy. Super chats are open. We appreciate that. That helps grow the channel. Diddy um, is saying that Blake Fisher, Dallin Hoker, and Eric all watch him. I don't know if he's saying uh, watch him as as far as being targets for the Bengals, but but definitely. But listening and hearing guys like Fuaga, you know, Fatanu, Sweat, like they're definitely doing their due diligence, bro. And and to me, Fatanu, when I saw that, like that's who that's one of the guys I want for the Bengals if they do opt to go offensive line. Uh, now, one of the things we haven't seen is like the Byron Murphys or any of those guys yet. We don't know if it's going to happen yet. It's going to be interesting to see, but they're definitely looking at nose tackles for sure right now. Um, and then somebody also mentioned like, you know, what are they going to do with uh, with um, uh, Johnny Newton? Like Johnny Newton, we haven't heard anything, but I got a feeling, man, what, I think what? we're going to see a lot of those names come in. I don't want to give too much up, but is is you do have a grade on prime for Johnny Newton though, right? Yeah, like the where, grade on prime okay. for Johnny but don't Newton. tell don't tell the people, don't yeah. tell the people. If you want to know, you can subscribe to my Twitter at New Stripe City. Um, that's where I have posted some of the prime scores there right now, so you can check that out. Um, there is a little bit of it left to it, but however, it might be a little bit more insightful because it's based off of the Bengals history and what they've done. Um, so take a look at that and check it out. Also, Mason Smith is another guy that actually was pretty high in prime. I actually did a mock where I picked him. We did. He we did a play. Visited, he hey, also bro, visited Cincy. I'm going to give you some names, too, because when we were in playback with Brady, um, we looked at – is another D tackle from Iowa that his RES score was, like, really high. But we looked at um, um, uh, Smith the other day, too, though. Like, I like him. There – I, I was interacting with somebody on Twitter uh, yesterday, and they were like, man, if we don't get the D-tag on the first or the second, bro, like, that's not good enough. I said, man, I'm telling you, I wouldn't just draft one or whatever, but I will say that there are some guys later on in the draft or whatever that I'm really, really starting to like. Um, I want to watch a little bit more. I've always been, like, on the Leonard Taylor train. I don't think the Bengals had a visit with him, but, you know, like, McKinley is a guy that, I don't love him, but I think like you know that that's a serviceable person that you could put out there. I think he might take a little bit of time, um, you know. But you, there are guys that I could see them going three tech and like you know straight up zero, and then putting them two together and say, look, we're that in itself is a revamp of the trenches when you pair that with rankings. So there's so many different paths to get to where you want to get, and that's been my cautionary tale to everybody is like make sure. Just because somebody doesn't want to do like what you're talking about first or second round, there are other plans that I think that the Bengals probably more so I think will be leaning in to more so be, if you think about the Bengals having drafted a D tackle in 30 years in the first round. So I hate to spoil it for a lot of people, but if Murphy or Newton are there, I, I have a hard time even thinking that the Bengals would take him, bro. Yeah, I mean – like you said, it, it depends on what the situation is, but I think it would be kind of hard to see it happening, especially given that they've, you know, re-signed Sheldon Rankins, you know, uh, Bob Hart. I mean, not Bob Hart, uh, but our other boy is there as well in terms of him being there in the, in the middle, B.J. Hill. Uh, so it would be hard for somebody, like, if you were to get a Byron Murphy or Johnny Newton, how much of the field would they see? And I, I don't know if this is the season for them to have a piece that could potentially not really be heavily involved in the rotation. And I don't know if you want to do that at 18. I, though I love Byron Murphy. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Like Byron Murphy, to me, you know, some people probably like Johnny Newton more. I actually like Byron Murphy more than Johnny Newton from when I watched him on the tape. But, you know, it has to make sense, especially – in a special season like this, but it is good to see that uh, Fatanu and, and some of these guys that we've heard are visiting. I know Zim is, is probably waiting like everybody else to see if Brock Bowers is going to be on that list of potential visits. Gotta be. And, and one of the things that would make that special is, and I kind of saw this with the Ravens. So I saw that the Ravens visited with Fatanu, right? 
they're nowhere in the range of Fasanu. So that means to me that they're considering trading up. So I would I would expect if you do see a Brock Bowers, that means the Bengals are thinking potentially we could possibly trade up to get him if he doesn't make it to 18. I, I, I got I got a hot take. I don't think they would need a top 30. I think that they just need the medicals on, bro. Like him not yeah. testing and stuff. In in the in the Brock Bauer scenario, we're gonna get into a crazy scenario next. <laughs> but in the Brock Bauer scenario, it all is cultivated from a big run on quarterbacks, like five of them at least. Then you got the corner, like at least two corners coming off, and then you got all these other guys coming off the board. And I think the Bengals, without trying to show their hand, that might be the gamesmanship that I was talking about at the beginning of it to kind of throw people off the scent a little bit where. The only way you would even take a Rob Bowers, uh, the other part of that equation I was saying is like you you like five tackles, or you like, or let's say you only like three, like me. I only I want Fu, Fuaga, Fashano, or Futanga or Fatano. If it ain't them three, I don't like it in the first. They might have a board that looks just like that. Say none of the ones after that are capable of our 18 pick. So them three go off the board, but then you got like Mims and guys that are still there. And you're like, yeah, I will take them later. Maybe they trade back. I don't know. But that's the only scenario that I think like you would even do like a Bauer, Bowers is because all the good tackles are gone. You had a big run on quarterbacks. You had even a Brian Thomas level wide receiver. All those guys are off the board. Cornerbacks are off the board. And then you're the Bengals, so you're not thinking draft the D-tackle first round. Those are like the ingredients of a Brock Bowers. And then when you couple that with the fact of the teams that, that will probably go and draft the Brock Bowers – um, number one, the Jets, that will be – they will go with Roma Dunze and say, now nah, we're going to go with Mike Williams, Adunze, and um, and Garrett Wilson for year one because Mike Williams is on a one-year rental. Then you go to the Broncos, they need a quarterback. Then you go to the Colts, the Colts need cornerback bad. Mm-hmm. And so there you have it. And then people are like, how could it happen? I'm like, that's how. The Fuaga run, I don't know. It's, it's not as easy to me. I can't see Fuaga getting it. His profile, our boy Know It All just showed a profile and I didn't put his RES next to it. His profile is the same exact as like Panay Sewell. There's no way for Like Bowers has a way better shot, especially the fact that he didn't do testing in his pro day. Mm-hmm. He has a way better shot against the Bengals than Fuaga, in my opinion. Yeah, I can I can understand that, especially once those tackles start to go after Joe Alt. You just never know. Like Fuaga could be the second guy right after Joe Alt. Uh, but since we're speculating, there's a lot of speculating today on Twitter, and it's it's kind of been like that. I feel like throughout the off season, but it seems like there actually may be some smoke this time. Justin Jefferson, Jettas trade speculation has hit the timeline. People are saying that they're the Bengals are poking around on this. They're really looking into this as a possibility. To me, I don't think it's far fetched because we, which we'll talk about later in the show, the Texans made a big trade, right? For Stefan Diggs, that was kind of put out there. Now there may be some other disgruntled receivers that may be trying to move away. And then we we are starting to hear things that. You know, the Vikings may be in the market for a quarterback, but with doing that, they're going to need some ammo to kind of move up as well. Does this equal, you know, a Jetta's trade actually being real or becoming a reality? And what are your thoughts on like the speculation? Like, do you think the Bengals are like, all right, we just saw what happened. Like now it's time to go into overdrive. Or what are your thoughts on on, uh, just the speculation in general? The speculation in general is fun, bro. I, I don't know why. Like, you know what's so crazy is, like, the old man on the line, which it might be – it's 400 people in here right now and probably, like, a 1,000 on Twitter right now. I can't even see all the people on Twitter right there. But this is the crazy thing. The old man on the line is like, why are you kids talking about Jettas? But that same person is doing, like, a million mock drafts every day with hypothetical situations on stuff that isn't going to happen. So why, why is that same person now criticizing people for having fun? They're like, I don't know why Jetta, why people think a Jetta's going to come to the Because the last time we saw Jetta's with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, they won a championship and they were the most unstoppable team known to man. Like, what are you talking about? To act like that's not a thing is crazy. Is it going to happen? I don't think so. But for me, you know, I like the positivity of it. I think it's fun. 
I think that nothing is impossible. I think that there are ways that we've explored this. We've done this in spaces. You watch their all season, not spending that much money, having hella cap space. I've always said cash is king. The Bengals have ammo that a lot of teams do not have, and that is a a, um, a, a, a wide receiver that clearly his agent is letting y'all know he doesn't really care if he wins. He just wants to get paid. I'm not putting words into his mouth, but you know what I mean? Like that's ultimately what it's about. It's like him getting paid. You have an organization with the Vikings that don't mind paying. Um, so you, and then they would automatically get a number one wide receiver that they could pair with Jordan Addison. So mm-hmm. that in itself is ammo in itself. 24 years old, not even in his prime, multiple thousand yard receiver. You have that. There, what other team has that that is ready to go? So then the argument against it would be, oh, well, they're not going to want to pay him. Bro, they're paying him way less than what they're going to have to pay Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson came out with a statement and said that he needed to make sure that the Vikings had a quarterback. I don't think that he was thinking J.J. McCarthy, you know, like when he said that. So you, you, I'm going to tell you one element of this that would change everything is if he comes out with any type of statement that demands a trade. Because then at that point, they're, they're, they're slowly losing leverage, and now teams know that the asking price for them is less. And don't forget, whoever trades for them, if they were to trade for them, is buying into and assuming the liability of making this dude the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. But that's the crazy part. Jamar Chase is already going on record to say, I will be willing to take a little bit less. I've also, he also has gone on record to say he would play, he loves the idea of playing with him. Joe Burrow, you know, has talked about weapons. I know our fan base is not big on weapons right now, but he literally came to a press conference and said, I made my contract so that I can have guys like T. Higgins. So if, mm-hmm. you know, like, so there, there's all these different things that are going on that kind of make it seem. And then the icing on the cake is, oh, yeah, Jamar Chase is working out with Justin Jefferson every day. So, like, you got all these different things. Like, even my son be asking me, like, did the deal go through? Because, you know, like, you know, on the internet and all this other stuff. And I'm like, Uzi, like, it's not. You know, like, bro, like, you tripping. But the more and more I think about it, it, it does make sense. But it ha- but the Bengals have to do a couple things that they notoriously don't do. Pay a whole lot of money up front, cash, so that they can absorb some of that and take away from the cap hit. He mm-hmm. doesn't have an agent that I that I believe would want a 65% plus guaranteed contract. The Bengals have never really had a big problem paying annual, like, you know, annually be oh, did I knock that joint out? Oh, they never <laughs> they've never had a problem like you know paying this like annually uh salary to the wide receiver position because it's a percentage of the cap. Currently they have a bunch of rookies on their, you know what I mean, on their on their on their on their roster. The right. tricky part is is meeting up with the Jamar Chase contract, you know, whenever that meets up, and how does that work? But Burrow has to go and use his twenty three million dollar restructure that clause that he has next year to lessen his cap hit. They have to have a whole bunch of money up front, and they got to be willing to give up this year's first. I would think, like people have been saying second or something. No, it would be you're giving up this year's first. This in my year's opinion. First. And T. Higgins, and then some future stuff. If you ask a Vikings fan, I'm pretty sure they'll tell you, "No, nah, we need three first. You're not going to get that for a dude. Like if he was, if he was like, if he had like in his third year or something like that, sure. But you're not going to get that for a dude that's about to be the highest paid. Like not happening. So yeah, yeah. For me, like in this situation, you remember when we first talked about it? I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was a pipe dream back then because it was a completely different situation. At that time, Kirk Cousins was the quarterback. You know, Vikings were doing good. But then I remember telling you, I was like, and I think Ryan hit the group and he was like, look, the floor is being laid. And the first thing, and I think I give you credit because you said this, the first thing is he would have to demand a trade. What happens with the quarterback situation? You know, Kirk Cousins ends up getting hurt, ends up signing with Atlanta. They don't really sign anybody except Sam Donald. Nobody's going to be happy with Sam Donald as their quarterback. Like, that's a joke. Like, let's just keep it above. We know what Sam Donald is now. And, like, reports are coming out that they may consider playing Sam Donald the entire year. Nobody is sticking around for that. Um, the Vikings seem to have, have missed their window. And when you look at their division, 
that division right now, the Lions and the Packers are the class of that division. And then you also have Caleb Williams coming in uh, potentially as the first overall pick. So right now they look like the worst team in the division. The Jettas really want to stay with the worst team in the division with an unknown quarterback situation that he doesn't know what he's walking into in a rebuild. No, he doesn't want to do that. So most people in that situation are going to request a trade. So that's the first domino. The second domino is that T. Higgins has also requested a trade, right? T. Higgins has also not signed his extension. T. Higgins is also, he's not Jettas, but he's a guy that you can get in exchange for Jettas that is very comparable that you could really pair with Jordan Addison, like Zim just said. As a Vikings person or, or, or someone on that end, if you get T. Higgins plus some picks, you pretty much are good. Like you're not losing that much from the receiving department, whereas you know T. Higgins is a valuable receiver that you can trust. You know that he can play wide receiver one. It's not a question of whether or not T. Higgins can play number one. Now, is he as good as Jetta's? He's probably not, but he's still a very good wide receiver that you're getting that you can pair with Jordan Addison that probably complements they probably will complement each other very well. So you've got that part of it. Then you actually have the picks with the Vikings wanting to move up in a draft where this is looking like you're going to have three, potentially four quarterbacks. And if you don't get one of them, you're going to miss out. Like, can they really roll the dice on hoping that they can get a J.J. McCarthy? It seems like they're going to have to make a move in a trade with someone like the Patriots or someone like that who's reportedly – uh, according to CTE ESPN, who also was right about the big <laughs> trade, apparently they talking with the Raiders. Apparently they talking with the, the Raiders are trying to jump up to that third spot. So if you're That's the Vikings, crazy. you already went out and tried to get some more ammo. You still need more ammo to move up even more. And the Bengals 18th pick could be what time it is. And so like, this is a situation where T. Higgins has said that he doesn't want to play in Cincinnati and wants a fresh start. You got a guy like Jettas that could come in. Jamar and Jettas are working out with each other right now. And then you got Jamar Chase. And then these guys have already gone on record and said, Jamar has already said, hey, he will move things around if they could bring Jettas. And I'm sure the same thing will happen with Jettas as well. And you've got certain situations like Game On is pointing out in the comments that technically Jamar is could play – for two more years on the deal that he's on right now. This is year three. He's still got year four and year five until the extension kicks in. With Burrow, that kicks in next year. But Burrow shares an agent with Jettas. They can move some things around in their contract. Like, it can actually happen. Like, I think before it was a pipe dream, the way this thing is cascading and falling, and just with the draft, with the situation in Cincinnati and in the situation – in Minnesota, I think is is close to happening. The other domino. Is, whoa, whoa, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. chill out, chill out, chill out. Close to happening. Is I think it. I think is closer. Let's say closer to happening. I don't like. I it wouldn't surprise me if it happened because I think the other domino, which we're going to talk about later in the show, is the Texans just made a power move. The Texans just made a power move to do something, and usually when you're in these situations with with teams that are in the same conference and that are considered contenders, somebody got to answer somebody else. When somebody makes a big move, like them going out and getting Stefan Diggs and all of these moves, you have to counter that with some other move. And this would be the perfect counter to that move would be bringing in Jettas. I feel like it's a win-win situation for all sides involved. And it makes sense that they're at least kicking around the idea of potentially pursuing it. I think you could get it done for 18 and maybe a second in 2025 and T Higgins. I don't think that you're getting better than that for Jettas based off of what we've seen with what Stefan Diggs just went for. So like, I think that based off of that market, they would have to listen. Who else can offer something that good in terms of a package for them that gives them three first round picks to move up and get their quarterback that gives them T Higgins. It gives the Bengals what they need. I just don't. I don't know, bro. Like it. Like y'all. I, I, I right. think. I think it. I think it would take another trade partner to be like a part of the situation too. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I was saying a first round pick, maybe that comes from the other, you know, the other entity or whatever. It has to be somebody else. I think because the player, the magnitude of the player is just way too big. But I just need to say this though: if you them signing T Higgins. 
they could do it. It's just the guarantees that were hanging them up. Like them right. signing T. Higgins, like be very clear. Like that that was a, that that was a deal that probably could have got done. But the agent went all of the agent, all of his clients that signed last week or the week before were free agency. All yeah. of them got sixty five percent plus guaranteed. The Bengals right. are not signing up for that for another wide receiver. Would they do that for Jamar Chase? Possibly, but I think they'll try to avoid that too. I think they'll do it just like how they did Burrow's contract, make them the highest paid, but take away from the guarantees to give themselves outs. That's just the way the family does their business. I think that T. Higgins probably would have been somewhere around 23 to 26, somewhere around there, right? Right. Jet is, I mean, $4 million more than that? Yeah, and that's I not think, that. Think, that's not that crazy to me. The other thing too guess is guess who? Guess who? Justin saying, Jefferson's agent. Guess who? Justin Jefferson's agent is though. It's Joe Burrow's agent. And here's here's the other thing. So there's the structure is the same. There's a big difference in the situation between Jettas and T. Because a lot of people are going to say this. They're going to say, "Well, if they can't pay T, how can they pay Jettas?" Well, T and Jettas haven't had the same pay structure the last couple of years. Jettas was a first round pick, meaning that he has a way he's made way more money than T Higgins has up until this point. T Higgins is not in a position to take a discount. He was a second round pick. He wasn't able to get paid what a first rounder should have gotten paid. So he doesn't have the security to be able to say, all right, guys, like, yeah, I'll do a discount and take a hometown. Like he's been playing at a hometown discount, whereas Jettas first round pick, you know, fifth year option. He's able to get a lot of more money than T. Higgins has made to this point. He probably had what T. Higgins has made thus far in his career in like year one. So like it's not the it's not the same money wise. And the other thing is him being cool with Jamar and Joe is completely different because they could come together and come to some kind of agreement to make it work that type of way. So I know people are going to say, hey, he could reset the market and this and that. That makes sense. But I think that they can make it work in a way where if it's like a three year deal or something like that, like they could do it and then walk away from it and just say, hey, hopefully in these next two, three years, we want right. to go. I go back to the market and then I go in and reset. That, that's that's another key aspect of this thing is that the shorter the amount of years, the more probable it is to me. And I think to, to me, Modern day contracts in the NFL, that's what they're going to look like. I think you're going to see a lot of two year deals now instead of like those being like the prototypical three year deal. And then the same thing, whereas most of us have been training four year deals with a, you know, after the third year out, guys are watching the NBA being able to every all season. If y'all not going to give us guaranteed contracts, cool. It, we get it. It's 53 man roster. It's hard to guarantee that many contracts. But the top players and the star players, they're going to opt for shorter ones so that they can go reset the market each time. Unless you're playing like certain positions, you watch the D tackles, you watch certain positions. But there are positions that the market is so crazy right now that you want to reposition yourself really quick. So another thing is somebody might say, well, Jettas for long term couldn't work because of the cap hits of Burrow like later on. Sure, later on. Remember, Burrow doesn't get into the $40-something million cap hits until two years from now. So, <clears throat> so in that light, you could squeeze, like, a couple contracts in there. Currently, right now, because Jamar's still on his rookie deal, their, their percentage to the cap for their wide receiver room, I believe, is 12%. Somebody could check me. It's really low. It's not, like, one of the higher ones in the NFL. But that's because Jamar Chase hasn't signed yet. I think that both of them would be willing to take a little bit of a cut and then make it work in this three-year window. If they had the opportunity to do it, they say, let's go do this, and then we go reset again. We'll be in the prime of our careers. At that time, we would have had a Super Bowl. We could go do it again. I, I, I do think that that part – and the other thing is this. As of right now, as we're recording this April 4th before the draft, projected cap space with all the free agents coming off the books. The Bengals have over $92 million in cap space for the 2025 season. That doesn't include T Higgins next year. That doesn't include Jamar Chase, but that's just as it stands as of right now. So anybody saying that they don't have the cap space to do it, you're, you're, you're cap wrong. They, they do have the cap space. It, is it practical? Do restructures too. We talked about it, when we did. They got the something that they could do. Orlando Brown Jr., Trey Henderson. Like, there's a lot of things that they could do to make this happen. And, like, 
we literally just saw Orlando Brown come here for under his market value. Like people are people are going to try to sign up for that uh, under what their asking price may be, especially if it involves a Super Bowl. Uh, Victor paid here ten dollars super chat. Appreciate that, bro. Is it possible that the Bengals formula is vet, best available player? Sign one to two year deals in free agency uh, on, based on free agents wanting to get that money up front in Joe Burrow's window or closing their career with a Super Bowl opportunity. I, I think it could be, man. You know what the what I was gonna say though. You know what visits we haven't seen on top 30s? Receivers. I ain't see any receiver reported at all, like <laughs> at all. But I do think best available player for, for a team that didn't get any wide receivers in free agency. No wide receivers in free agency. Like they cooking up something, man. They cooking up. There's a lot of people that are that are definitely plugged in, you know, putting some smoke out there. Uh, I can, can, on, on can I read? It's a lot of smoke. It, and, and I just want people to understand, like I let over the show. I'm not reporting nothing. Ace isn't reporting anything. I'm not reporting anything. We're having fun in off season. It's April. People do mock drafts and hypotheticals all the time. We're putting together the information on why it would make sense. It's no different than any of that. Like, that's all it is. And what it is is a form of entertainment. There's a lot of people that are like, why y'all even doing it? You're delusional. I feel like it's delusional that somebody be like, yeah, the Bengals are going to draft Joe Walt. I saw that early on my job. You know, like, it's all delusion when you're doing any of these mock drafts. We're we going to draft Brian Murphy. You don't really know that. You don't really work in the front office. So it's just a form of content creation. It's really fun to have a conversation and put together the dots. Like you can see, yeah. we put a lot of different information and a lot of thought behind it. So we're just not making this, you know, like the concept. It's, not, it, it's a scenario to definitely think of. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to get into percentage chances of it happening, but like, I really do believe it could happen. Like it wouldn't be I do far too. for something I, like I that do too. to happen. I, I do too. And I think the conditional, it, it, like it might not happen. But I bet you that there's been an inquiry and I bet you there's been comment. Like now I've heard that, but I'm not reporting that. But do you think so? Let, let's just say you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't I don't think I think people are so caught up in what the Bengals used to be that they just think that that couldn't happen. That like it's the Bengals, like that wouldn't happen. To us. I, I listened to people earlier that day, bro. It would be during the draft. Because it has to involve like currently, it has to involve currency right now. Like, it has to be draft lottery tickets that I could cash out right now if I'm the Minnesota Vikings and I'm giving you the best player, no matter what teams are involved. I need it right now. Like, people keep on throwing out all these hypotheticals on, like, would you do this, T. Higgins, to the Bills, and you give up a – and and then you get there 2025? Like, why would I lessen my Super Bowl chances to take on a a variance of a new uh, prospect and then I got to wait to cash out my lottery ticket next year when I'm trying to win a Super Bowl right now. The Vikings yeah. might not be in a win-now mode like that, but they're for sure going to want to cash out something to show their fan base right now, in right. addition to something in the future, too, because we're talking about the best wide receiver in the NFL. And in is- that hypothetical to the Bills, too, like, can you imagine – People, I get DMs about Jesse Bates every day. Can you imagine cutting on ESPN and watching Josh Allen throw bombs to T. Higgins? That would be nasty. I'm not that would be that. from a PR standpoint. Like, and you're the Bengals. You like, I saw that earlier today. It was like for the 25th pick, and everybody was like, "I would do that right now." And I'm like, "You sure about that?" Like, I don't think that that's a bad trade. But look who you're trading to. Not only are you helping out a team that you could kind of bury and push back in the AFC. You're going to let them move up and catch up with everybody, give give them a top three player on your team, and then you just think like you're just going to take pick number 25 and then automatically it's going to cook. And Josh Allen's not going to cook with T. Higgins? Like, what? <laughs> like, duh, people would be furious. Like, bro, this dude just got 1,200 yards with Josh Allen and the A's. You know, like, say they have any bit of success. Jesse Bates didn't even do, didn't even go to the playoffs, did he? And then they were like sending me DMs like, see, bro, we should have kept Jesse Bates. Can you imagine if T. Higgins has success in the AFC conference? Like, no, sir. Send your butt to NFC, bro. NFC. You getting out of there. Like, you better do that over there. Don't do that nowhere on this side, bro. Yeah, I was going to also say, like, 
the the Vikings too, they have a history from ownership of trading very good receivers. It's the same team that traded Randy Moss. They traded Stephon Diggs. So it just wouldn't be too far-fetched. Percy Harvin, they've always traded their wide receivers. Uh, Diddy here says, Boyd or Renfro, depending on the draft, is wide receiver three. I mean, bro, if they get Jettas, I don't even know. I don't know, bro. <laughs> you could get, you could put anybody at wide receiver. He said Renfro? Renfro. He said Renfro? Heck no. I, I I've had this stance that I felt like all along. I like I, I think Renfro is cool, bro. But mm -hmm. I'm going with Yoshi over Renfro for me. Like, yeah. Uh, but I, I uh, but but cool, the man. but the thing to me is the Bengals draft so well at the wide receiver position. It's literally a, it's an argument against myself because I would entertain Brian Thomas. They tell me all the time, why would you draft him up that early? Bengals draft wide receiver so good. Just wait later. You know what? I agree with you. So I'm gonna cook my own argument. I could go get a Hunter Renfro at 21 years old right now for a fraction of the cost that isn't like damaged goods on a bad team and all that. Uh, like, just give me a new wide receiver three. Let him and Yoshi battle it out. All right. So that was the spicy topic. Let's get into some more spice. Um, Joe Burrow is going to be appearing on the Kelsey Brothers podcast live from Cincy. The Ops is pulling up. They pulling up to the Natty. Travis Kelsey's had a lot of spicy takes to say about the Bengals over the years. The Bengals and the Chiefs have had uh, a healthy rivalry. What do you think about this, bro? I'm kind of like, like, is Joe Burrow bored? The last time we did a podcast, he said he was bored. And then, like, the other day, he, he tweeted that he was locked in tunnel vision, you know, eyes on the prize. And now we hear that this Kelsey pod appearance is, is coming through. What do you think about that? I'm not a big fan of it. I feel like Burrow is very selective on what pods or what interviews he that he does. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I've seen a couple comments that be like, man, they're professional or whatever. I'm, I'm a lunatic. I'm going to just tell you like online, like I, I, I am a Bengals lunatic. And if them dudes ask a question, one about T. Higgins, which would be awkward and weird, because you know what it reminds me of, like that op stuff. You know, like when they come in spaces and they be mm -hmm. like, yeah, so like what y'all going to do? You know, I really like the Bengals, bro. Like y'all got it going on. But how y'all going to pay for T. Higgins? Like if they if they try to squeeze like a T. Higgins one in there on Joe Burrow and be like, you know, I don't care if it's Travis or, or the other or Jason. And they squeeze it out, I'm going to be pissed. I ain't going to like that. If he says anything about a Super Bowl, I ain't going to like that because what it's doing is setting Burrow up to show, like, I'm strong. Like, bro, like, you know, Burrow going to cook back. Burrow going to be like, yeah, I mean, good good Super Bowl. You know, it's a good thing I wasn't there. He might say something like that. Chiefs fans yeah. going to take that one little snippet and then use it all oh, year. Oh, yeah. my God. They take the dumbest sound bites, and then they use it all year. While we be in there arguing with Steelers, Ravens, and all, and Browns and stuff, here come the Chiefs out of nowhere. Like, huh, you remember you said that in April at Kelsey's show? Like, bro, I'm not trying to hear that you crap. Think, like, think Kelsey oh, my is going God. To They've been talking a lot about the three-peat. You think Kelsey going to be bringing up the three-peat when Joe is on there? Bro, it's impossible for them not to have friendly banter, and I hate, like, the – I think it would be cool if they just hung out. Then we're having all the people being able to clip the sound bites off of it is going to piss me off. Because every time that they Jamar get they get any little clip on Jamar or any little clip on Burrow, you know Burrow never says anything negative at all. They use that drink over and over again, and it's so it's gonna be like the new Burrow, Burrow head. head. It's gonna be <laughs> the new Burrow head. No matter if he says any, like if he doesn't suck them off on the show the whole time and be like, oh my God, thank y'all for letting me come on here. Oh my God, y'all got championships. If he does anything other than that, they're gonna be like, oh, see, he's cocky. And I do. Like, I like Burrow's so smart. I do not see how him going on this show like actually helps him. Like, I don't, I do not think it helps him. Do you? Like, what could I he get like, from it? I feel like somebody put this out on Twitter, and I think it's real. I think they probably tried to announce tickets, and nobody in Cincy was going. I Like, nobody was like, why would I go to a Chiefs podcast in Cincinnati? Like, they don't make – it. it's basically like the only thing worse is Big Ben pulling up to the Natty and being like, yeah, I'm going to do a podcast at, uh, <laughs> at Paycor. Are you guys coming through? 
nah, like the only I feel like that is a reason that they did it. They knew that Joe Burrow would definitely make everybody in the city come out. I think they probably announced it. The sales was probably low. And I, I had to agree with that person on Twitter that said that that it was like, yeah, what can we do to get the city of Cincinnati out? Let's announce that Joe Burrow is, is, is coming through. So I think it's a little bit of a ploy there. You know, I don't know what Travis's relationship is like with Burrow. I don't know if there was, you know, some money exchange for an appearance to happen. But I think it's definitely like sales motivated because there's no way that you're pulling up to the Natty and people are pulling up to a Kelsey Brothers podcast without Joe Burrow well, being. I, I heard it's like charities behind it and stuff like that. And I've heard all of this stuff. I'm just telling you how the Internet works, bro. Like I'm a content creator. You use a moment like this to carry you through months. Like they're going to get so many little clip notes out of this thing like. Yes, it could be a harmless conversation. Yes, they're professionals. Yes, that like it's gonna be a good fun. Yes, it's gonna be that. Yes, it's gonna be professional. Yes, it's like all those different things, but that's not the way the internet works. The internet takes and picks pieces apart from different things, and then people like myself have to answer to all that stupid stuff that don't got nothing to do with nothing, and it's super annoying. Like, I don't know. That's just my I guess it's my it's my own personal thing. I just think it, I just think it's stupid. I don't. I, I see it, Burl. I like when Burl used to do the weekly show on Cowherd because I thought it benefited him and it bene- benefited Cowherd. If you're telling me like this raises money for a charity, cool, like awesome, bro. I'm just telling y'all what I'm telling you. Like this is before this happened. I'm telling y'all right now, this is exactly what's going to happen because that's the way the internet works. It doesn't matter if you have good intentions. Once people have like something attached to you. Like when people tell me about, oh my God, Joe Burrow's cocky or whatever, or they be like, oh yeah, Joe Shiesty did it. Once they do that in, a, in the public opinion like that, it doesn't matter what you think of them. Everybody else that doesn't like them, they just go and use it as like on Twitter and just fire it off. And then take, they'll take whatever. Watch what I tell y'all. y'all like y'all thinking it's like whatever. And at the end of the day, it's going to be harmless and it's going to be stupid. And, at, and you know, it's not a big deal. It's just annoying. Mm-hmm. That's all. Nah, for sure, for sure. Uh, but speaking of cooking up, we're gonna toss it to our good friends at Midwest Best Barbecue. Shout out to Midwest Best Barbecue 669 Justice Court in Loveland, Ohio. Got to get the Uno wings. Got to get the G-Funk wings. Got to get the CTB wings. If you didn't know, the CTB wings are a lemon pepper buffalo mix. That is right. Lemon pepper and buffalo. If you're getting ready for the draft, if you're breaking down film, sitting somewhere, feeling kind of hungry, make sure you check out Midwest Best Barbecue. They have barbecue. They have wings. They have ice cream. Whatever it is that you need to get your fix on, head on to Midwest Best Barbecue at 669 Justice Court in Loveland, Ohio, and let them know Ace and Zim sent you. All right, Zim, before we get out of here, the biggest waves that were made this week was a trade within the AFC. The Texans essentially sent a second-round pick in exchange for Stephon Diggs And it's now been reported as we're recording this on Thursday at eight o'clock that his contract has actually been altered for it to only be a one year deal. They're going to give him, I think, four million from next year. Uh, The bills are going to cover 30 million of that in dead cap for this season. They pretty much paid him to leave. The Texans took him. They kind of changed the contract out, eliminated the remaining years. 
in an effort for him to give his best season. He's basically going into a one-year deal, kind of a prove-it deal kind of situation, contract year where he can get out and test the market next season. What were your thoughts on this trade? Because I feel like the Texans, just from an all-around standpoint, have been cooking. They added pieces on defense. You talk about Danico Autry. You talk about Daniel Hunter, who was an MVP runner-up considered by some just because of the sacks that he had. Uh, you talk about them adding pieces on offense, bringing back the tight end, adding a Joe Mixon. Um, so upgrading at the running back position and also upgrading at the receiver position with now getting a guy like Stefan Diggs to pair with some of the guys like Tank Dell, Noah Brown and Nico Collins. Now, all of a sudden, the Texans look like one of the top teams and top contenders in the AFC, along with the Bengals and the Chiefs. What were your thoughts when you saw this trade come through? I thought it changed a lot. I, I know people, I saw you getting a little bit of flack for like actually acknowledging that the yeah. Texas, that, that's a big move. That's a big and, move. Um, you know, I, I'm, you know, I get labeled as an optimistic fan or, or emotional or whatever. Like, I don't know where that comes from because everything that we talk about on here, we back up with like factual information from whatever analytical company or whatever. Like, I, I don't really move with emotions to make a decision. If we win, I definitely will let you know about it. And I'm also going to be very, very honest. The Texas made a power move, even if it is a short term. I don't think it to me long term, like long term, it's a bad deal for them. 31 year old wide receiver. You're giving up a second round pick like in the future or whatever. Like, I think that that sucks. But as it stands right now, Nico Collins, Diggs and Dank and Tank Dale and Joe Mixon and Dalton Schultz with, with a top five quarterback like. I might be jumping the gun and calling them a top five quarterback or whatever, but I really like maybe I bought into the Stroud stuff. Like when the Bengals, and then think about this: you're you're a Bengals fan. You watch CJ Stroud. Like how many quarterbacks can you name that you felt like went toe to toe with Burrow? Like do you know? Like I remember Herbo. You know it was you know the Joe Mixon fumble and then, like I don't really remember nobody so. Think about that. He did that without Stephon Diggs. He did that without Joe Mixon. He did that without, like, oh, Tank Dale did play in the game. You know, but, you know, uh, Nico Collins, I don't think, was, like, really lighting it up all the way, like, how he was towards, like, the end of the season. But, like, Noah Brown definitely was lighting us up. Noah Brown was cooking. So, you had all – did Nico Collins play in that game? I believe so. I think Tank Dale did, – did Tank Dale – Tank Dell was in the play. We just rewatched this the other day. Yeah, we just watched it on. I just don't remember Nico Collins doing anything. In I never remember, and that's something that I brought out when we were watching the playback. How many rookie quarterbacks or young quarterbacks or even veteran quarterbacks Nico didn't play? Have looked that good against a Lou Anarumo defense. Exactly. Like, so, so, so before, look, before people say the defense looked bad, how did that defense? How did Pat Mahomes look against that same defense? Right. Like, if you're a Bengal fan, like, this is what I was, I was kind of, I kind of got off track a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. I remember, like, how I was saying, you were taking heat for telling people, like, this team is looking really good. The right. addition of Daniel Hunter on the other side of Will Anderson, Dan D'Amico Autry in the middle, like, they got some spots that I think they can improve. But, man, that's a really good-looking roster, and they haven't even gone to the draft. And so – I saw people trying to make fun, trying to come back on all the old mixing stuff, which is like just a heavy level of resentment that I don't know why the Bengals fans have against their second leading rusher of all time. Like, I don't know why you should feel like that. You should be happy that Mixon is like in a good situation. Like he ultimately could be like something, you know, later on that people will but, say. But don't get it twit. He's still the ops. Like the Texans. And he I is had, a I big a ops. That was like the Texans are our ops. Like it's been up with them. Since Matt Schaub didn't Facts. throw a touchdown, and Aaron Foster, I, I, I don't hate the Texans Foster like you do. Ride down the sideline, pause, and TJ Yates, like, yeah, it's, it's been up with the Texans, and now they're back. That's all I'm saying. Like, they're back as our op. Right. And I, I don't hate the Texans like you do. I do have a little bit of admiration for them because I just like some of the players on that team, and I like the way that that's constructed because I'm a fan mm -hmm. of football. And I right. think a lot of people was taking that out of context to yeah. say, oh, what y'all scared? Joe Burrow will cook them. I seen Stroud without Nico Collins, 
and without <laughs> Stefan Diggs, and he was cooking. cooking. So you mean to tell me that they did all that on defense? I think that they have better coaching than us. And y'all don't want to talk to y'all don't want to talk about no weapons or nothing. No, you just no, you else? just like let, let like now I hear you. Yeah, I'm with you and protect nine. You're gonna have a chance, but at the same time, I would like to also protect nine and also weaponize so that I'm not in a position where I can't score 27. You can't go to the playoffs against them dudes and not score 27. I'm telling yeah. you that round right now, on April 4th, 2024. You better score more than 27. You play them. That, that isn't going to be some defensive slug match. It's going to be mano a mano. And we saw how that looked the last time. Burrow had a chance. Uh, Boyd drops the touchdown at the end. We, we can talk about all those different things. But if you don't respect your opponent, it reminds me how all them purple people talk about every time that they lose. Oh, we had injuries. Oh, we beat ourselves. And da-da. we're not going to be that. We're the yeah. Cincinnati yeah. Bengals. We're going to respect our opponent until you knock them off and beat them. We beat the Bills. You got the right to say, yeah, bro, we packed them up, sent them on their way, got them up out of there, like, whatever. Like, we we seen them at their best. We beat the Chiefs when they had when they had Tyree. We didn't beat, you know, you could say that, but you didn't beat Stroud, and you didn't, and they didn't have Diggs, and they didn't have Nico Collins, and they weren't on all cylinders. What do y'all think is going to happen to the New Year? They um, like the, yep. the damn 2021 Bengals right now. Like, they got it's weapons, weird, and they are ready to cook. And everybody get online and be talking about some Man, I mean, y'all be talking about that weapon stuff. Like, bro, all you got to do – bro, I'm telling you right now, in a regular season, yeah, you in your division, you better protect them. When it comes time to the playoffs, the teams that didn't advance because their quarterback wasn't cooking and they ain't have enough weapons. Just straight up, like, if you got weapons, you could cook. And – now I don't need to have the greatest things of all time, but you got to give him enough so that he puts you in a position to win. With the Cincinnati Bengals, who always had weapons. Now in 2024, because Burrow got hurt, we're now sitting there and thinking that weapons ain't a thing. Were we about to lose our wide receiver two and our wide receiver three by the time we get to 2025? Y'all think that that's a thing? And we just lost our second leading rusher in the, in the, in the Bengals history, who was only 27 years old. Y'all just think that we're just going to sit around and just roll out Trent Irwin? How did that go in the AFC Championship game in 2022? Hello? So respect your opponent, understand what you're going up against, and understand it's always who they and we're going to pack them. But at the same time, you better be, – Tobin better get ready. You be, we better come back to that Justin Jefferson. We need Jets. What are we doing here? We need Jets, bro. Get jettles, we man. need Jets, the, bro. Like, the other – The other – The other – like, I also heard people saying, like, they were giving them a lot of credit. I do feel like they did copy the Bengals formula. The main difference, though, and I was going to say this, too, another person that cooked for the Texans, if you was watching in the playoffs, Laramie Tunsil had uh, Miles Garrett in a blender, in a blender, completely took him out of the game, my boy. So, like, if y'all remember, when we played the Texans, remember, we couldn't get the C.J. Stroud. The trenches, the trenches nope. was good. So, no, nope. like Zimmer saying, man, you just gotta respect. You hit opponent. on a on a major point too, bro. Like on that other end, yeah, you you might be looking at like um, I don't know, like a Gerald Burst or something. Like we need rushers, <laughs> bro. We need we need we need we need more than Shona. I love Shona Rankins pickup. We need more than Shona Rankins. Give me give me Hall from you know um uh from what you call it in the second. Yep. Give me something, but we yep. need weapons on offense. You need weapons on defense. And yes, of course, protect nine. I know how if I don't say exactly what you want me to say, the guy is sitting there and saying, these guys are idiots. They need to just block for Joe Burrow. And that's it. <laughs> All you got to do is block for Burrow. <laughs> I hear you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, bro, like that's that one. That's that, that's what I, I don't have to say that anymore. Like, yes, we get it. You want to block? You want to block for bro? We got it, bro. But after yeah. that, you got nine other picks. You better yeah. go and do something. Like Tobin, and come don't on. Don't forget. Bro. Don't to forget too. Derek Stingley is on the other side over there. Derek Stingley and Jamar used to go at it in practice every single day. There's probably not not nobody can stop. Uno. So let's let's just put that out there. But this guy knows a lot about Jamar Chase. If there's anybody that would know anything about him. Uh, got another super chat here. Ten dollars. When they asked T what other quarterbacks he would like to play with, he named Trevor Lawrence, CJ Stroud and both Christian Kirk and Stefan Diggs. Contracts will expire after the season. 
That's true. I mean, I don't think there's space for T right now. So like that would that would have to remain to be seen. But if Jettas is a Bengal, we're not even talking about that, man. He's gonna be a Viking. So uh, with that being said, Zim, before we get out of here, was there anything that you wanted to say to the people? Man, I just want to keep on saying I like ra- randomly. I got a couple orders on my site today, but go check out zimhuday.com. I still got good merch on there, like you know, um, whole lot of orange series, all that. Make sure y'all go to newstripecity.com. Um, check out all of his merch on there. You got some shiesty designs and all types of stuff on there. You still got the collector's item on the Migos when they were together. They said Tyler Boy was in Cincy yesterday. <laughs> y'all want to talk rumors. <laughs> You know, you, you still get you still got the, the 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 possibility of amigos thing, but I do want you all if you are watching this, please make sure y'all subscribe to go to playback.tv on your phone right now. If you ever supported my Harry Nuts gang or supported Cincinnati or supported anything, I want you guys to go on there, go and get the app on your phone. I promise you, it's free content. We give you free all 22 free bangle stuff, all types of stuff that you do not get on Twitter or you don't get on Spaces. You don't have to pay for anything. It's just the app. Playback.tv. Go look up the room, Ringless Bandits, or just put in Zim Who They I'll pop up. But go on there, and, and the many is the more subscribers I get, the more I'll be able to do giveaways. So it's like a 1,000 people in here right now watching us live. I know out of a 1,000. Can I get like a 100 or something like that? Something like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This has been the Winston Podcast. Please be sure to check out the other shows on our network, the Bengals Pulse. They've got some dope stuff going on over there with Jake, mine, and Eric. Uh, but tap in with us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like button, and make sure you keep it tuned to the Winston Podcast. It's an exciting time to be a Bengals fan. It's an exciting time to be a Bengals fan. Now we got a special show as always. The voice of the Bengals of the and world. Four, Willie Anderson, Corey Dillon. The name of this thing is called Winston oh, Eddie, and I'm not going to stop. Talk to us about that roller coaster season. I'm still going to give you the same AJ. I'm going to work as hard as I can to be the best. I've been working here since I met y'all, bro. Yeah. I got to get your top five receiver. <laughs> 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 Watch out for us.